What's something you're willing to admit to the people here on Reddit, but not to most people in real life? One time on vacation, I was hiding in a closet that didn't have a door and my unsuspecting husband was getting ready to walk by. I jumped out at him and scared him harder than ever before. He literally shit his pants. We silently agreed that we would never discuss it but man. Every time someone says you scared the shit out of me my butthole puckers a little cause I want to say something so bad. Too long didn't read I actually scared the shit out of someone and as long as I love this man. I can never talk about it. Not even with him. Best thing I've heard all day. This thread is an excellent reminder that no matter how messy you think your life is, nobody really has their shit together. Especially not you very agathed Winderer's husband. I feel like the most boring person in the world. I can see why I've lost all my old friends and can't keep any new ones. Also, I'm really bad at maintaining relationships. I'm pretty happy, but I'd be all alone after my parents are gone. Don't tell them that I have some pretty boring friends, but they are really cool people with good human qualities. I'm not hanging out with them out of a need to be entertained. I like their values, their generosity, their tenderness, their openness, and so on. I'm a 45 year old virgin, the most unexpectedly accurate username. I think I never got over being in love with my best friend I had as a teenager and 10 years after the last time we talked I still have sex dreams or think of him when I get turned on. It is the most bizarre and unbreakable thing. I found that partners that I truly fell in love with, I can't not love them. I'm still in love with them. It takes time, but I've found that I just have to push them down in my heart and wall it off. Sometimes they break out and I have to do it over again. Sometimes it's a dream. Doesn't have to be a sex dream. Maybe it's just the love you have when you fall head over heels for your first love. But I can't even BF be friends with her still. It's like a knife twists in my heart when I see her picture. When we were together I couldn't imagine being with anyone else. Like, literally couldn't imagine it. My life turned to shit for years after she broke off our engagement. Deep spiral of depression. Self-sabotage and drug use. I've never been the same person since and it's impossible to be that person again. I'm currently very happy with my so, but they are always at the back of my mind. Edit thank you for the awards. The responses I've received have given me heart. I'm glad we are not alone and able to reach each other. That's the crazy thing. We haven't talked in at least 10 years. I don't have Facebook I don't have his number, but he's just always there. In my head. We didn't even date. Just cared for each other. I've never since met anyone who's even come close to how I felt or oddly still feel for him. Reading your comments feels like looking through a window to my future. It's only been about 4 months so far for me, but I've dated a couple people 4 years at a time and had plenty of crushes before and nothing has ever stuck like he does. How much I think about the one who got away. Mostly because it was so long ago that it's pretty sad lol. That's more common than you think. You dream about that because you don't know what could have happened. So anything could have happened. It can be comfortable to think that you were once in a position to have whatever you wanted. The way to overcome that is to remind yourself to look at the good life that you do have. The way to overcome that is to remind yourself to look at the good life that you do have. What if his life is at a miserable moment? Asking for a friend. Then remembering that anything could have happened applies to the future just as much as the past. It might suck now, but that won't always be true. Keeping that in mind and doing whatever small things you can to be happier will always help. My eldest son is a hardcore heroin and meth addict. Ugh. Sorry. Much appreciated. My brother is following a similar path and the havoc and turmoil he has caused to my parents. And I is the hardest thing we have ever dealt with in life. Hang in there and stay strong. Most importantly don't beat yourself up or blame yourself for their decisions. Once. When I was much younger my guess is around 10. I read my mom's journal. I got a glimpse into how much she was struggling with her mental health. Working as a full time nurse with 3 young kids. And a husband father that wasn't very present. I'll never forget the heartache that I read about. And her underlying message of only wanting the best for my brothers and me at all times. 
I used to get really upset with my brothers when they wouldn't help out to the same extreme. Which wasn't fair considering they had no idea since my mom would never show us how unhappy she was. Now, I'm 33 and to this day I try and go above and beyond to lighten whatever load I can to make her happy. That I'm constantly at a loss for words. Literally. I feel like those around me are smarter than I am. I struggle to get my words out, although I have clear and concise thoughts in my brain. I just can't articulate them into meaningful sentences that keep people interested in listening. Much like the way I feel about this post, my words feel meaningless. I relate. Sometimes, when speaking, I think of so many different ways to say one thing, and I end up completely butchering the sentence. I stutter, restart sentences, repeat words or even mumble them. I prefer writing out words because it's easier for me. Always comforting knowing there are others like me. In fourth grade, it was pizza day at lunch. I wanted an extra slice of pizza but didn't have an extra lunch chip. If you had one of those, you'd put it in a bowl and you'd get a second helping. I pretended to put a chip in with convincing slate of hand. The lunch lady was fooled and gave me that extra slice as I'm eating my pizza. One of the lunch ladies yelled, who took extra lunch without a chip. I said nothing. I've never admitted that to a soul. Until now, the cold case has been reopened. I'm imagining an old retired lunch lady the spare bedroom that once contained her daughter's childhood possessions now houses a modest desk and a pinboard covered in photos and newspaper articles. Red string connects one thing to another. Mary Lau wakes up, does her usual morning routine. She visits the room with a cup of coffee in hand. It's been months since she's opened the door. She sighs and says I'm getting too old for this shit. I'm starting to question my career choice in healthcare. We all are. Most of us are saying it out loud. You're not alone. Gonna go on a ramble here I think. Medical field in general, and especially with all that is going on, is ducking rough. A person can prepare ahead of time to deal with seeing people pass away. They can at least try to be in a place mentally that they are ready for the stress and trials being responsible for their patients can bring. But the things that hit you from nowhere are the small details. Seeing people who get admitted that are upbeat despite circumstances slowly become more and more tired as they struggle to maintain weight and seeing the light fade from their eyes as they try to hold on to hope. Not knowing if they will or did recover. That duck in eats at a person. It hurts to see if you allow yourself to care for your patients. And your instinct is to pull yourself back. Distance yourself from it so it doesn't feel as personal. It's natural. It's human. And it's understandable. I think that's where a lot of burnout comes from. Having to face that grinding wheel every day. I think I'm fortunate that I'm only in patient transport. I can't do anything to maintain their care, just be a positive experience for them. But, having done this for nearly a decade now, my feeling is that no matter how much it hurts, you still have to let part of it hit. In order to bring what good I can into their lives, I have to keep myself from closing off as much as I can. Part of what I can do for patients comes from them being able to tell I can care still. It hurts to do when you hit those small notes that slip through your defenses. But I can't imagine who I would be if I gave up entirely. It can be a struggle. I don't think anything in healthcare can be truly worth the money you get if you don't close yourself off. But I think it's important. Sorry for the wall of text. Thanks for letting me get some of the words out of my head. Edit I just wanted to say thanks to you all for awards and your comments. Those of you also in the field. You have my best wishes. Hopefully we get to the other side of this soon and we can share our smiles with patience again. Sometimes I envy the guys in transport, because they seem to be the only people whose job is to be upbeat and shoot the shit with the patients without asking anything back. All the rest of us, the doctors m, nurses, therapists, are always bothering them, asking the same questions repeatedly, and doing invasive things. But you guys stay cheerful. We lamb around, and make fun conversation. I always love walking back with the patient cause of you guys. I never realized it was so hard on you guys too. But thanks for what you do. I didn't pronounce the G in Harbinger with the J sound. I rhymed it with ringer. 
I fantasize a lot. At least half the day I'm in my head in the middle of some glamorous scenario that I'll never be in. I do that a lot, and it makes it really hard to think normally without drifting off to some universe where my life is a thousand times better than I will ever be. That I've had suicidal ideation off and on all of my adult life. I might seem fine getting on with my day, but inside there's a voice saying on repeat you're no good, kill yourself, and most of the day the image of me blowing my brains out, you wouldn't know, I seem like a fairly happy guy. I can't tell anyone anything that's going on, and I know I need to, but I just physically can't make myself express my problems. That must be difficult having everything bottled up inside, it is. The only way I'm seemingly able to express things is with random internet strangers. I feel absolutely stuck. I took a new position at work to implement a new project two years ago. It's all up and running and is self-sustainable with the right people. But I've grown so incredibly sick of it. I've completely lost my passion for it and I'm really struggling to find something else. I learned not long ago that I was my late grandfather's favorite grandson. But until that time really didn't think a lot about him. To the point where I thought that him dying the first was the best case scenario. Now I'm just trying to find him again in my memories and I feel like a pure asshole. That I have the urge to pack my bags walk out of my parents house at night and start a new life and leave the old one behind. Edit I did it. I had a plan ABD it worked. Left my loved ones a litter and now I'm planning my new life away from the toxic one I left behind. Make sure you got the cash and high school diploma. You will not find many jobs that hire high school dropouts. Not livable wages anyway. I completely ducked up my relationship. I was hurting her so bad and I didn't even realize at the time. It kills me to realize now how bad of a person I am. I'm pregnant. But I've lost 3 babies already. So I'm really scared about telling people this time. I hope sometime in the future you come back to this comment and link a baby pic. Allow yourself to be happy if you can. Joy is such a terrible thing to waste. I've been unemployed for almost 3 years and I feel like such a ducking failure. I'm so close to being out of savings and I can't get a single interview. 3 years and you're just now running out of savings. That is a substantial achievement on its own. For real. OP should be a financial planner with that kind of discipline. Sadly. It's only because my grandmother passed away that I had any savings. But it was enough to pay off my car and clear my credit card debt. I have generalized anxiety disorder. And it's gotten worse. Especially since the brutal lockdowns we had. It's impacting my work life. But I don't want to make my employer aware of my condition. I want to get married. It's my deepest wish, but when the subject comes up my romantic and childhood insecurities take over and I speak ill of marriage. Bill Burr admitted on a podcast with Russell Brand that he routinely made fun of marriage, even though he deeply wanted to get married and have a family himself. It was his dysfunctional upbringing that made him feel uncomfortable with vulnerable emotions. That I'm still in love with my friend despite him thinking otherwise. I've been in this situation before it never ends well. Unless you really are 100% okay with him not loving you back. Otherwise, you're just torturing yourself. I don't think I experience compassion or empathy like other people. But I'm too scared to ask if that's normal. I had same thought. In fact I kinda basked in it for years. Turns out I was numb to it all because depression. Now I have more compassion empathy and honestly part of me wants it to go back to the way it was. I don't know if that helps. But I figured I'd share just in case. Edit thanks for upvotes and awards. I didn't expect this comment to get much attention. I'm a 45 year old wife and mother with very well paying job. Typical middle class everyday type of woman. I have to suck my thumb to fall asleep at night. I'm not okay. Nor have I been 4 years now. There are days I just want to end this life. And there are days full of hope. But mostly an ever pressing weight of existential dread. Or meaninglessness. Edit I appreciate the responses. And be assured. That I'd never put those I love through that much pain. Those types of thoughts feelings are irrefutable when they come. 
but luckily I don't feel compelled to entertain them. Can't beat the wave gotta beat the surfer.